Tammany Hall, was it an instrument of corruption for scoundrels and demagogues, or was it the cradle of the New Deal and of American liberalism? That's the question historian, journalist, and author Terry Galway answers in his latest book, Machine Made, Tammany Hall and the Creation of Modern American Politics. Terry, welcome. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to talk to you always. Um, now, Terry, when many New Yorkers, and maybe most New Yorkers, um, hear the words Tammany Hall, they conjure up the image of a corrupt political boss, you know, stealing elections, paying for votes, and robbing the city blind. Is that the wrong image? It's, it's not complete. Uh, it's, it, Tammany Hall did all of those things, and in some cases proudly. <laughs> but there was another side to Tammany Hall, and that's the part that I, I try to explore in this book. Because Tammany Hall became, particularly in the early 20th century, Tammany Hall became a force for what we would regard as progressive government, as uh, social welfare reform, uh, even political reform. And even in the 19th century, at the high point of thievery, you know, Tammany stood for immigrant rights and stood for what we would say today, uh, pluralism. You know, they defended the rights of Catholics and Jews in a city that was very predominantly Protestant and in some cases overwhelmingly so. So I would argue that in many ways it was a very modern political organization in its best sense. Tammany started as a private men's club in the late 18th century and it was kind of nativist. The opposite are some of the things that you have. Uh, mentioned and talked about what kind of alchemy was used to result in transforming it into the kind of uh, organization that you described. Well, it was a social organization. You're absolutely right. It was a bunch of guys getting together, having a few beers, you know, and then at one point uh, somebody realized, Aaron Burr among them, realized you have a block of people here who might be persuaded to vote as a block. And so this fraternal organization became a political organization which in essence took over the Democratic Party in New York. Uh, beginning with the Great Irish Famine in the 1840s, Tammany Hall uh, was very good with math and began to be able to count. And they realized there were all of these immigrants coming. There were two ways for people in New York to react. One was to disdain them, which is the course that the Whigs party, the main opposition party, took. And Tammany said, you know what, if we can work with these people, they'll work with us. And there was more than just that for the Irish immigrants when they confronted Tammany and Tammany's willingness to help them. They, they saw a very similar picture to what they left. Talk about that. Well, the Irish, uh, of course, were colonized people. They were ruled by uh, Anglo-Protestants, British Protestants. Uh, the native Irish were mostly Catholic. And they came from a country where not only were they oppressed, but their poverty was attributed to their character flaws. Uh, all of the uh, 19th century uh, English newspapers and newspapers in Ireland constantly say that the problem with the Irish is not their poverty or their starvation, it's with their character and their lack of virtue. So when the Irish come here, they find that that's being said about them again, that the sort of civic elites, Anglo-Protestant elites, are in essence saying that uh, the problem with the poor is their lack of character. It's an argument that has not exactly gone out of fashion. <laughs> it is right, I was going to say. So, uh, so I think that the Irish immediately reacted uh, to that argument by saying, okay, well, those people who are saying these things about us are our enemies, and those who do not judge us which was Tammany. Tammany was not big into making personal judgments. Uh, they will be our friends. What was the golden age of Tammany? It was the early 20th century. It begins before the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire, which of course is a, an important milestone in American history. Describe it quickly. Uh, it was a, a fire in the Greenwich Village that uh, consumed a fa an eighth floor factory on, in March of 1911. There was a sweatshop, teenage, the doors were locked, Jewish teenage and Italian Jewish girls. and Italian women, uh, 145, most of them women, uh, were burned to death or f jumped, jumped to their deaths, right? And so uh, there was great outrage over the lack of workplace safety and that expanded into a, a movement for workers' rights. And over the next few years, led by two Tammany figures, Al Smith and Robert Wagner, New York investigated these uh, conditions, wrote legislation to ameliorate them, but also began the conversation about things like workers' compensation, minimum wage, and all of the things that we associate perhaps with the New Deal actually start under Tammany rule uh, in the 1911, 1921 period. What killed Tammany? The Immigration Act of 1924, which cut off the constituents uh, of Tammany Hall, uh, the New Deal, which sort of institutionalized 
uh, a lot of the things that Tammany did. You no longer had to go to the local clubhouse to get help because help what you were entitled to help now. And I think it's very success. Uh, the, the immigrants that it sought to uh, assimilate into American society, in fact, assimilated and went to the suburbs. Mm. And there was no longer any reason for Tammany's existence. All right, Terry. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.